Welcome to a Parallel Project Training, APM Project Management Qualification Podcast based on the APM Body of Knowledge 7th edition. You should be using this in conjunction with our e-learning, podcasts and potentially a tutor-led course. For more information, please visit www.parallelprojecttraining.com. Hello, welcome to another Parallel Project Training Podcast. My name is John Bolton. Um, we're going to be talking today about conflict and negotiation. And this is part of the Body of Knowledge 7th edition, all squeaky clean new podcast for 2020. So if you're doing the Project Management Qualification Box 7, this is for you. As I say, my name is John Bolton. I've got Paul Neighbour with me today. Hello, Paul. Hi, John. Hello. And um, we're going to be talking, as I say, about conflict and negotiation. Um, within the syllabus, which is the thing that you should be reading and paying attention to, there's three things that are, are important for you. First of all is uh, explaining ways in which conflict can be addressed. And it says such as, and I'll remind you that so when it says such as, that means that this is an example of the sorts of things that you could use in an answer. This is, it says such as Thomas Kilman. Now, Thomas Kilman is an example of a conflict resolution model. There are others. If you want to use the others, it's perfectly legitimate, but we're going to be talking about Thomas Kilman. We're also going to be talking about explaining how to plan and conduct negotiations. Uh, negotiations are a form of conflict resolution, really, because if you're not in conflict, you don't need to negotiate. Um, and there again, we've got three things. We've got Zopa, Batner and Win-Win. Interestingly, in the syllabus, it says including. And where it says including, it means you do need to understand what those three things are. So Zopa, Batner and Win-Win. So we will talk about those in a little bit more detail. And the last but not least... Um, Paul's going to be talking about stating the sources of conflict within a project. So where where does this conflict emanate from within a project environment? So I suppose, first of all, Paul, the point I suppose would be good to make is that conflict's not always negative, right? Yeah, yeah. But some conflict creates energy, and drive and direction for yeah. the project. Yeah. In fact, you can imagine a project with no conflict. Yeah. You just turn up, oh, how are you It's just <laughs> drifting along. I can't quite, imagine that somehow. Uh, well, quite often, uh, the, the com- conflict, in a, in a military sense, conflict drives innovation. Yes. You know, so and, and what can be seen as a negative conflict can be positive, you know. Yes. Second World War saw the creation of <laughs> micro circuits, jet engines, nuclear power, all sorts of things. So it's not always a bad thing, but... I think when people think about conflict, they think about personal conflict. Yeah. But actually, when you're in a project environment, it is a controlled conflict resolution technique because some people want really high quality, some people want it really quick, and some people don't want to spend any money. Okay. So you have to... There's that inherent conflict in the triangle of balance, you know? Mm-hmm. So, you know, the, why do we write a business case? Why do we write PMP? It's to sort of work through those differences of opinion from different stakeholders. But... Focusing on sort of negative and uh, sources of conflict, there are, there are a couple, you know, where, the, where does conflict come from? Where does it come from? Mm. So is it Greek? I don't know. Greek? Latin? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Source of conflict in projects, you know? So, sources of conflict. Yeah, well, things like timings, dates, scope. Yeah. I think I've finished. I don't think you have. Yeah, yeah. Uh, interpersonal conflict, you know, he's a great guy but smells a bit. Um, not able to explain acceptance of the project deliverable, as I said. Um, stakeholders kind of arguing amongst themselves. One wants a blue one, one wants a green one. Someone somewhere has got to sort all that out, you know. And the project manager, bless them, you know, they can get sort of stuck in the middle, you know, mm. like piggy mm. in the middle. Mm. Um, mm. It's quite important they don't take sides, I think. But I it's think that's also, where um, issue management has a big role, actually. Yeah. Is that, that, you know, not all these weights are on your shoulders. You know, yeah. you, you get the support of, 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 yeah. of, of the organ. The structures are there to help you. Yeah. It's uh, quite, quite important to depersonalise it, actually. And if you've, got a, yeah. if you've got a decent process, then that's what that does. Yeah. Because you just say, I want to I want to change, I've changed my mind, I want a blue one. Project manager goes, absolutely right. Respect your right to change your mind, but can you fill this form in? And all of a sudden, you're kind of. You know, this is the accepted thing to do. It's not just, just me, it's the process. It's the, yeah, back yeah. to the project office. Exactly, it? yeah. But I think when they talk about this Thomas Kilman model, um, okay, so they're Thomas talking Kilman more about, about behavioral approaches, behavioral to approaches conflict, yeah. different, yeah. different right. ways you can address conflict. So, so uh, Thomas Kilman is quite a famous model, 1977. It's a two box grid. 
I reckon you could make a fortune with these two box grids, really. But um, well, the Boston, one of these Boston two, Consulting Group yeah, did. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to put assertiveness, <laughs> how assertive you are on one side and how cooperative you are on the other. And it basically gives you a choice, you know. So, so uh, do we want to go for each of these five? Well, you know, historically, the examiners do. I mean, okay, let's go. To, this is probably the only model that you're ever going to use guess, for yeah, this, right? Yeah, so yeah. it's not the way it's just walk so, through it quickly. So, um, a highly assertive. So, I'm, I'm going to decide I'm going to be highly assertive and I'm not going to cooperate with you at all. I'm just going to say, this is what we're doing. I don't care. Do it this way. And, and that's called a competing, also called a forcing style. So, when would that be the right thing to do that well when you haven't got time really when it's urgent when it, you just need something doing health and safety infringement the, the fire alarm was ringing lots fire of, alarm. let's not have a workshop to decide which door yeah, to let's use have a debate. <laughs> <laughs> let's just yeah. let's just take action on this good um let's move it across then collaboration collaboration is i'm still searching what i need but i want to find out what you want so we're going to work together we're going to collaborate together to find a solution that's but right for you right for me you could say it's a win-win. You know, it meets your needs, might meets my needs. We're both happy. But people use this word so loosely to collaborate. Mm. If I'm going to find out what you want, and you're going to find out what I want, and then we're going to find a solution that meets both our needs, that is not going to be a slow process. <laughs> no. It's going to take a lot of time and effort on our part. I also think, though, you do got to, you know, collaborating is the pull, isn't it? So you collaborate. I, I always think of collaborating. You get more, more than either of you could achieve on your yeah, own. Yeah, that's right. So, right. you know, if I'm making a lemon meringue pie and you've got a lemon and I've got an egg, yes. neither of us are going to get a pie. Yes. You know, example, whereas I if we collaborate... Like is architects. You know, what does an architect want? An architect right, wants a yeah. beautiful building. What's a builder want? Some square box. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere Cheap. in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> There's a beautiful building that's easy to build. Well, it's the area where joint ventures come out. That's you know, right. so two organisations, both specialists in their own areas, can't can't deliver what the customer wants so they yeah. join forces yeah so that's where your natural joint ventures yeah. come from and yeah but like you say that can take a long time to negotiate yeah. and a long We've time worked to organize with some organizations where they've had real problems collaborating because they've got a joint venture and the different partners have different processes mm. <laughs> so they they adopt the apm process because it gives them a common language really. mm. Mm. so uh compromise is a, a one most people get that's you know I don't get quite what I want and you don't get what you want. We sort of meet in the middle, 50-50. Um, final accounts, I think, quite often. You won't get paid all you want. You'll get paid a little bit, mm. you know. Yeah, yeah. I think I should have got more. Well, I'm not prepared to pay more. And you... Everyone thinks of it as the, it's a, a, the eternal compromise, you know. it's Sometimes you do just have to give a little bit to get, to to get, get anywhere. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But it's not a win-win no. In fact, it's a lose-lose. That's right. Because neither of you get everything you wanted. Yeah. But it's... it's it's Final account is a good example because you can't collaborate on a final account. <laughs> there is no solution that everybody's going to be happy with. So you just have to compromise, you know. Mm. The difficult two are the avoiding and accommodating. So accommodating, basically, I'm going to give you what you want. Uh, I'm not going to assert my need. I'm just going to give you what you want. Why the hell would I do that? Well, it might be that I'll get some... It's not that important to me. <laughs> I might get some chips by giving you something that you want, that you don't need. Uh, I might have made a mistake, and you've banged me to rights. So I accommodate you, say, OK, I'll fix it. To, you know, we've done a mistake there. Well, I'm just going to accommodate your, your problems uh, and make it right. <laughs> so, um, so I'm just being very compliant. I think project managers struggle with this one because it's not... It's not natural to to give in <laughs> no because you're losing your it isn't almost like a a win lose for them they yeah, win yeah. you lose yeah. but but sometimes it's worth it because you choose your battles choose your fight. battles yeah you choose yeah, your, the yeah. things you know you can't win every battle so you you give yeah. up on so you don't want to win the battle just to lose the war yeah that's right so uh, okay we'll we'll give them that we'll give them that that's important to them but what we'll do is we'll focus on the ones that are important yeah. to us. When, when someone comes ranting that the coffee machine's not working. Yeah, that's right, I'll buy you a coffee. <laughs> you just say, go and buy a new coffee machine. <laughs> yeah. It's 50 quid, go down yeah, to my... John Lewis. There are other places to buy coffee machines, by the way. Yeah, but, and then avoiding's difficult. But I think we just do this naturally. Um, if you've got teenage children, you do it naturally, don't you? You don't... Just like... 
annoy it, ignore it. <laughs> because you know if you open up that, that can of worms, it'll get worse. So you just sort of like that, just yeah. like, let's not go there, you know. This, uh, Don't mention it. Uh, just sometime. diversion. Sometimes you get people on projects that uh, avoid it all the time, though. Yes. Just don't want to get involved. And you know full well that at some point they're going to come back and say, well, I thought that might happen. So what so. the model says is you should have all of these in your repertoire, but we've got biases. You know, some of us are more natural competitors. Some of us are natural avoiders. Some of us are natural um, accommodators, you know. So, um, so we need to be aware of those biases, really, and, and make sure we're balanced. Mm, good. That's Thomas Kilman. So if you, if you get into a conflict, you might have to negotiate. Yeah. Um, the APM, <laughs> one, one, steps in a typical negotiation process. Right? So I think, we, yeah, we all think about this and all the time. And, uh, but these things that we're talking about here, we're talking about um, Zopa, Batner and Win Win as well in negotiation. Because yeah. these are seen as sort of negotiation, negotiating tactics, yeah. really. Or not tactics, but principles. Yeah. And um, they, they talk about different types of negotiation, like formal, informal, competitive and collaborative. Yes. We've talked a little bit about the competitive and collaborative under Thomas Kilman, really. Yeah. But there's also formal and informal. I think we run away with the idea that all negotiation is sitting around a table, you know, oh, I with lawyers. I thought competitive was more where you had competitive bidders and multiple, multiple people negotiating. Between well, I suppose that suppliers. might be one form of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the formal bit is where we're sitting around a table with lawyers, yes. and informal is where we're negotiating in the <laughs> in, in the corridor, in the canteen queue, you know. Yeah. Or, so can I have a bloke for a day? I, I think the only difference between them really is the the risk yes. involved and the gravity of the situation. The, you're not gonna you're not gonna have a quick discussion in the corridor about a million pound no. change control. You're probably going to want to have a proper consideration yeah, of that. Yeah. So. I think, in a way, that's just understanding the, the, the raw differences. And then this negotiation process is, um, I, I find it a little bit um, Mickey Mouse, to be honest, all of this. But it does draw out some key well, you could points. Well, you could buy a, you know, there's a book about this, isn't there? Oh, yeah. The Get, Art of getting the Deal. to win. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> the Art of the what? The Art of the Deal. Oh, the deal. All right. Getting to <laughs> win. A, a, Jay Trump, isn't it? Oh, right. Oh, that's the whole the, stages oh, of the... Oh, I've done. No, no, I've done. a whole book on art of negotiation, yeah, you know. So we've got like five... I've I think we've just given... followed him. We've yeah. given five steps, you know. So yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. you know, understand the need, plan what you're going to do. That's quite a good advice, actually. Well, the preparation to me is the bit, really. Really sort of like... God, how many times have we sat in coffee shops reading contracts trying yeah, to yeah, figure yeah. out what this intellectual property you clause like means grief, or yeah. this liquidated damage is actually implied. But I think the preparation bit draws out all of this, what's in it for them, you know, yes. the batner, the best yeah, alternative. What, what are you going to do if you walk away? What do they what's, want? You know, what is your zone of potential agreement, your Zopa? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You, know, where, you know, if there's no Zopa, there's nothing to talk about. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, there are two countries at the moment who probably haven't got anything to talk about. Yeah, yeah. And actually, this, this Zopa thing is quite good because it might not, you might have to get quite a long way through the negotiation to realise that actually the other party hasn't got enough chips on the table, you know, for you to no. to, um, to to reach an agreement. No. You know? Well, we, I mean, if you recall, we had this situation with one of our customers, yes. and there wasn't just wasn't enough money in the pot to keep everybody happy. Yes. So there wasn't any point in negotiating any further. It's we just, just like, said this is just not going to go anywhere. Yeah. So it takes a little while, like you say, to get to that point, but that's quite a that, that's a necessary process. So a batner, we've had to do that, and we best alternative to a negotiated agreement. Yeah. So well, if we're not going to deal, what are we? Are we so my, my, yeah. We're when you go into, if you go want to buy a classic car, yes. I want that one there. Oh, no, that's the only car that fits my bill. That's not very good. And then that's not very good because I'm going to end up paying what they're <laughs> asking for it. <laughs> so, yeah. but what, what am I going to do if I walk away? Yeah. You know, I'm going to have to go and find another one. So, yeah. Last I, time I bought a house, I said to the estate agent, "We're making three offers today." <laughs> and, and you know by tomorrow we'll be accepting one of them <laughs> so you know we're not committed to that one house you know we yeah, yeah. didn't actually so anyway but we did have an alternative house you know so in my mind i wasn't committed to that one house it was, yeah it's what you're going to do if you walk away just what you're going to walk away. yeah because the the argument is if you go back in you're never going to get the same deal again no you know <laughs> so the, the car salesman are great at it you know you say how much is it to do a deal today 
Yeah. You know, what, what what have I got to do to stop you walking away? Yeah. And if you walk away, they're totally not interested in you anymore. Yeah, because they you know, know that's they've, it. they've blown it. That's you know, the, oh, they haven't blown it. You may have. Yeah. 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 Anyway, so Zopas, Batners, Win Wins. They're they're kind of strategies. St- yes, that's the word. Strategies. Strategies to get that, the negotiation um, done. Yeah, you just need. But I think the preparation bit is the bit. Find that out I, when year end is. <laughs> yeah, that's really useful. <laughs> yeah. Find out where the targets are. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, so that's that really. So I think we've done we've done that to death a bit, haven't we? What have we done? We've ex- talked about the ways in which conflict can be addressed. Yeah. We talked about Thomas Kilman. We talked about conducting negotiations. Yeah. Zopers, Batners, win wins, and yeah. we've talked about um, sources of conflict. Yeah. Um, and so I think that's probably done. Excellent. Well that's done. a wrap. Thanks a lot. We hope you enjoyed this podcast and found it informative. To find out about our training courses, e-learning or tutor-led course, please go to www.parallelprojecttraining.com.